Hey there game developers, it's me Titan Hex and I'm here with another tutorial. This time we're going to be going over a picture, or well a uh, evented menu. So evented menus are a little different from picture menus but they still contain very similar concepts. The evented menu uh, is a little bit better with animation. It's a little bit better with movement and things like that. Um, it, it takes a little bit more work but uh, you can do certain things with it that are a lot easier to do than if you had a picture menu. Uh, definitely animating the picture is a lot easier with it. So we're going to go ahead and show that off. Uh, I have a created picture menu here right now. Uh, this is going to be, I'm going to go talk to a guy and then four different options are going to appear. So as you can see, there's four different options and these are each teleport spots. So I can basically teleport uh, to one of four different locations in the castle using this little menu. Um, so I can't go out of the bounds. I'm, I'm trying to go out of the bounds right now and I obviously can't. Uh, so that's always a, a, an important thing. You can't exit the boundaries of the menu uh, using the selector. And now I'm gonna go ahead and choose the top left. So now I'm teleported to the top left part of the castle and I can go back and try the bottom right. And I'm, well, okay, so it's a little, <laughs> I'd have to fix that, but uh, it's basically set up correctly uh, the way I want it generally. So it's a nice little teleport menu um, that pops up when I talk to this guy. Um, and I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. Uh, first, we have to just close down this and we're going to go ahead and look at this guy right here. So the first, and uh, we're going to go through the, the coding in this pretty quick, um, and then we're going to make it from scratch, but we're going to look at what we need. So first off, we need a selector, and this is the selector image. Next, we need the menu buttons. We can have uh, as many as we need. Uh, right now, we have four. Uh, it doesn't really matter where the events are. They can be placed anywhere. Uh, I can move these here if I wanted to. Um, and you get to choose where they uh, appear and if they if you want some movement from them. So I added some movement for these. Um, they're, they're all set up basically how I want them. So the first thing that we need to do is create the buttons using events. Oh, so we create a, a button. Um, the buttons don't really have to have any code in them, but uh, if we want them animated, we do want to turn stepping on. So in this case, we have stepping turned on so that they animate left to right like this. Then uh, we want direction fix and through on. Direction fix makes it so that if it starts, when it moves out of the character, it doesn't start changing to a different sprite. Uh, it just stays on its own sprite and it keeps st stepping through the animations. Uh, we want through on because we don't want to get stuck on anything. It's a menu uh, option and you don't want it stuck on any of the uh, map or getting stuck. You want it to just smoothly go right where it needs to. Um, so once we have all the buttons set up, uh, we also want it to only have one page and uh, you can add more pages depending on certain things, but we want it to have one page and we want that page to only show up when a switch is turned on. So this event will no will be completely blank, gone, and away from the map until a switch is turned on, and which point it will appear. So with that set up, um, we're going to create a character or some sort of event or something that triggers the menu to open. Uh, so the menu opens when I uh, talk to this guy. So in order to set that up, we want the events to all appear on top of this guy's location, which is exactly what I have set up. So all these events, all four of these, including this, well, all four of them appear, yep, including the selector, appear right on top of the, um, the bull guy. So that's set up, uh, looks good. The next thing we want is to, oh, by the way, the selector, we want to make an event for the selector as well. And we definitely want its uh, speed and frequency to be as high as possible so that it jumps back and forth uh, as quickly as possible. You can lower it, but it's going to be less responsive and it's going to be kind of annoying for the player. So we want it to be set up, you know, in a semi-responsive way. Um, so we, we up the speed to the highest so that when the player hits left, right, up, down, that it goes where it needs to go. Um, so next we set it all right on top of this guy and then uh, we turn it on. Uh, we turn on the temp menu switch. 
So we've created a switch called temp menu. I have extra ones in case I want to have multiple um, menus in a single map. Um, so right now we have it turned on. Um, and next we go ahead and set the movement route uh, of each of those to sort of split out of them. So uh, one part of the options goes to the top left, the next one to the top right, bottom right, and bottom left. So we see that animation or that walking animation happen uh, using the set movement route. So we set the movement route of the correct event to move where it needs to move in order to make it look like it's coming out of them. Um, so we've set that up here and we make sure the selector also follows suit it goes to the default position that it's supposed to be in after it exits the guy so it's all just sort of splitting out of him um and that's what we've set up here so this is all how it works next we want to as always put the selector number at one or whatever the default position it needs to be at um, so the selector uh, variable is if you remember from the picture menu which i suggest going back uh and reviewing if you haven't done so um, or just making sure that you understand picture menus because this is taking a lot from the picture menu and building on it more um, using events so it's important that you understand both of them uh, and as we go into depth in this and the picture menu you should have a good understanding of what it takes in order to create these kinds of menus so next we have uh, the selector set at the default and we wait the 15 frames to make sure that the input isn't still being registered after you've opened up this menu uh, so we give the the input a little bit of a, a buffer next we create the loop which is our wait for button press loop you guys should be familiar with that uh, especially from the picture menu and of course the wait for button press tutorial uh, basically, it is a loop with a if conditional branch, and that if conditional branch is checking for a button press. And if the correct button is being pressed, we want something to happen. Uh, so that is the wait for button press in a very simple uh, sort of way. So next, we need a if uh, wait for button press, and then we make sure that. Uh, things are happening in this case we make sure that the selector is moving to the left but not going out of bounds which is basically what all this is and we make sure if we go right it's going to the right and not moving outside of the bounds we've set um, the down button is the same way where we're making sure that it's not going outside of the bounds it needs to be in um, and then with all that done we also create the uh, confirmation so we make sure that when we confirm the button is uh, registering where it's at and then it's doing something according to the position it's at if it's in the top left it's warping me in this position if it's in the top right this position etc etc then we're keeping track of the position using just simple math and, and manipulating the variable so that when we hit a button we know that it's moving to this position and it's keeping track of it um, and it's, it's fairly simple Next is the uh, cancel, which just breaks the loop. And uh, we have the, this is a little debugger that I created. It's nothing important, uh, but I added it anyways. So once the loop is finished, we want to make sure we're cleaning up after. Cause once the loop is broken, uh, we want to make sure that it's cleaned up and goes away properly. So in this case, the, um, the, the buttons, or not the buttons, the options uh, that burst out of the guy, return back into him, and then after they're all done, they disappear because we turn off the menu switch. So once the menu switch is off, then the, the, the uh, game is registering, hey, there's no page for these events. We're just gonna make them disappear, sort of. Um, so we always wanna make sure that there is, just like in this top one right here, um, three or all of the events uh, are sort of uh, so so we want to make sure they're all sort of after, they're like there's no weight in each of them the last one will have the weight and that makes it so that they all go at once otherwise it's going to do this wait uh, till this is done do this and it would just be like up 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 which you can do and it would just look a little different um so i mean i could show you guys what that would look like uh, we might have to change things around a little bit but it wouldn't be too bad uh so let's go ahead and do that 
I'm gonna move this here real quick. So we're gonna go ahead and show you uh, what it's like when we don't do it. Uh, we're also we're also gonna want to uh, up the speed on these if we're gonna do that. So up the speed on that. Up the speed on that. Up the speed on that. We don't have to worry too much about frequency because frequency is used more for the uh, autonomous certain parts of autonomous movement. So I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like if we do not set the uh, you know set the uh, the thing to one weight with four non-weighting before it so it should sh shoot out in a a pattern like that so now we have a, a different one boop 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 uh yeah so i like the other way much better uh it's a lot more mini oriented uh so so that's sort of how it works uh we can move these back to normal uh, but yeah, so you should be able to understand from that why we put the wait uh, till completed at the end of the uh, sequence of options popping out of it. So next, we uh, we can just get rid of action. You know, yeah, we can get rid of a lot of this. Um, wait for completion off. So. Uh, well, no, actually, you know, we don't have to get rid of it. Uh, I've pretty much gone over it. Um, I'm going to go over it a little bit more and just explain to you how we're doing this, because this is a good starting place for understanding how to do multiple rows and multiple columns. Uh, so what you want to do is, um, if you, you haven't, go over the first picture tutorial. It goes over this in a lot of depth. But the way it works is it's in decreasing the um, selector value by one when you go left, increases it by one when you go right, increases it by 10 when you go down, and decreases it by 10 when you go up. So we're setting a boundary. Uh, we're saying that numbers one through nine we can use, and then um, we're starting a new column in set of columns in numbers one through, or 11 through 19, and then 21 through 29 is it another set of columns and that sort of creates this uh, nine by nine grid that we can use so uh, we have we can use a good I believe it's 81 buttons which is more than we'll probably ever need so 81 buttons um, it's a good good you know place uh, all you have to do to remember how many rows and columns you need is to just think hey um, how many spaces do I need and then add one to that and then multiply it by however many there are so if you want to make a two by two grid and just you, you know you're never gonna go over that with with this kind of menu uh, it's just gonna be a two by two always you can just do a um, you can do one and two for the numbers and then use three is the buffer point and then four and five and then six as the buffer point uh, and then you can just keep that in mind um, so you need a nice you need one number to be the buffer the one that says hey you're running out of the bounds uh, you need to go back into the bounds that were set for you um, so that's a uh, you need one number for that and then you need it uh, the other numbers for the selectors like the selector positions so one and two in this case is top left um, and top right and then so that's row I believe that's row one and then row two is uh, 11 and 12 which are bottom left bottom right um, so I could easily have done this with one and two and then three is the out of bounds and then four and five and then six is the out of bounds but I decided to do it with a bigger uh, selection um, so the way that works is that if selector equals zero so we know we're hitting that bound zero is a boundary ten is a boundary uh, 11 or 20 is a boundary every basically every tenth number is a boundary so that's kind of what we have selector equals one selector equals 11 um, hey you're out of bounds when you're going left uh, you're hitting one of the boundaries if you're in here and we need to position you back where you need to be which is 1 and 11 so we know that if you're hitting that boundary you need to go back up one so you go from 10 to 11 and 0 to 1 so hey we're putting you back on the right track um, we throw in a thing that says, hey, if you're not going out into these boundaries, then you just move left twice. So, uh, it's, for the most part, it does work. So, 
yeah so when we decrease it by one we reset it if it's out of bounds which puts it back where it needs to go and we only move it when it's um inside the bounds that it needs to be in so only when it's a valid movement um if selector is less than two uh this, so right's going to be a little different so we're going to check if it's if you're inside of the bounds that you need to be in um so we're checking if you're inside of uh, you can only go right if you are between uh, if you're less than two or greater than zero. <laughs> so basically that just means one. That only leaves the number one that you can be going right on because one's the only position where you will be able to move right. Um, but if we could expand this to be between, uh, if we, we wanted a three by three or a four by four, we would do, uh, we would change this to three or four. Um, so it, it's just a, a small amount of changing in order to get it to work where it needs to be. Um, so we know that if we change this number and increase it, then our boundary is increasing and it can go farther to the right. Um, so that's, that's always a good way to, to look at it. Uh, if this number increases, we're going farther to the right. So you always want that first number to be the maximum amount that you can go to the right in that column. Uh, same with this one. You want it, this to be the maximum amount you can go to the right in this column. So it would be, uh, two spaces or one space to the right you can only go one space to the right uh, basically well two spaces uh, but you can only move right when you're in the leftmost space because that's the only place you can move right uh, in this case we could just expand it to three and then we could only move left if we are on one or two uh, so there, there's just different ways to do it uh, and then we say hey we want to make sure you're uh, also inside the correct boundary so that that's why you put that there um, and if you are in those you're going to do this uh, little thing right here so something to keep in mind right here uh basically we are saying hey you are in the right position to be able to move so then we're going to update the values uh, and move the selector where it needs to be same with uh, the down positions a little bit different uh we're we can do a lot simpler stuff for columns we just need to make sure that it's uh between the boundaries uh, so in this case we're making sure that it's if it's less than one or if it's less than 10 uh, you can move down and in this case uh, more than 10 you can move uh, up so basically um, we're checking the lowest set uh, plus our so basically our max rows or our max rows yeah max rows um, no, 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 not times 10 in this case. Um, our number of rows times the max amount. Hmm. No, none of those really work. Uh, anyways, we're setting it down to the, to the best bounds that we can. So we know that this is uh, one through 10, uh, 11 through 20, 21 through 30. So we know uh, if we have only two rows and two columns, we only need to check to see if it's less than 10 and greater than uh, 10. So in this case, let's say we had three columns, uh, we would go from, we would say less than 10 still because we're doing a, um, a maximum limit of nine total that we can ever have. Uh, so we, we want to check if it's less than 10. Uh, if it's less than 10, we shouldn't be able to keep going. Uh, wait, is this mixed up? No, no, it should be all right. Uh, it might be a little mixed up. Anyways, we want to make sure if we're going down um, that we can only go down. Oh, wait, no, this is greater than 10. Hmm, that works. Whatever, so we want to make sure that uh, we are going up in the correct way. Um, less than 10, greater than 10. Uh, we want to make sure that it's our boundaries uh, aren't being like if we are at the lowest set of numbers we want to make sure if we're in that lowest set of numbers we can't keep going up uh, and if we're in the highest set of numbers we can't keep going down so that's pretty much what this is doing it's saying hey are you in the highest set of numbers which is then um, numbers above 10 then you shouldn't be able to go up are you uh, in the lowest set of numbers below 10? You shouldn't be able to go. Uh... Actually, if you're in the lowest set of numbers, you shouldn't be able to go down or you shouldn't be able to go down. Yeah. I'll have to double check this. I, I, I might be 
I had a, I had a migraine. No worries. Uh, my brain isn't fully on it, but this seems like it's still working the way I want it to. So I'm just going to leave it the way it is and assume it works the way it should. But we're saying if you're in the lowest set of bound numbers, you shouldn't be able to keep continuing past that lowest set. And if you're in the highest set of numbers, which is like you could go all the way up to 90 uh, or 91 through 99 and, uh, and and even farther than that. But uh, if you're in that highest set of numbers, the highest set of numbers that you as the creator of the menu um, have designated you don't want to be able to keep going past that you want to say hey once you're in that highest set of numbers stop moving that cursor down yeah don't respond and update um so we make sure we put if you are oh that's how it works if you're in the <laughs> so we're saying uh because we can't say hey don't move up uh we we can only say hey move up only if you're in the above the highest set of numbers and that's what this is saying are you above the highest set of numbers then yeah move up otherwise don't do anything because you don't want to do update you don't want to change your position if you're in the lowest set of numbers only if you're in the higher set of numbers and then it checks um hey are you in the uh below the highest set of numbers yeah then then you can keep going down you can do that uh so you can do it now uh, so since we can't say do not increase by 10 or do not move up uh, we have to say only we can only do it the opposite way so uh just a little bit just, you might want to be going over some of your uh if and logic uh so if and and not your logic gates are are very important to, to understand um so yeah that's sort of what we're saying hey are you above the highest set of numbers or the, are you above the lowest set of numbers then yeah you can do it are you a above the highest or above the lowest set of numbers yeah you can update if you're below the highest set of numbers you can update sort of how it is um and then of course you have the easy okay etc right here and then uh your cancel just breaks the loop without doing anything this confirm uh breaks the loop but it does what you are expecting it to do so we know one and two is going to be position uh the top left then 10 and 11 is the next set of or the next row uh so uh something like that so we know this is uh row one and this is row two and then if we wanted a third set of options that would be row three next set of options row four uh these are column one column two so it's an easy way to create columns and numbers uh columns and rows um uh, and it should be hopefully somewhat uh easy to understand if it's not practice it a little uh look at what i've done here go through it uh see what you just play with it and learn 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 practice 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 and then understand by playing with what you've created um so this is sort of a cool little menu uh, there's a whole bunch of neat little things you can do with it i have created a menu where that um you can have multiple options of how you interact with something so i could go up to talk to somebody and i could be like be mean be nice or like i put a face here and be like happy face sad face angry face and then um surprised face so i could be a response to you could have different responses to different people when you're talking to them um or after you talk to them or you can have different um ways to interact with a village you could have it so that you can overtake a village or you can enter it or you can peacefully uh or talk to the leader or or different things like that and some some interesting little war games uh, so there's a whole bunch of little things you can do you could even make it so that uh you can choose what character uh i could make a, a character mini out of this using those i can make it so that rows of characters appear when i talk to him and i can turn on and off different characters uh, things like that are totally possible so just kind of keep that in mind there's there's a lot of neat little things you could do with evented tutorials and you should definitely try them out so that's pretty much the character tutorial uh or the evented menu tutorial um i definitely suggest getting creative with it we're going to go into some pretty neat systems i'm going to teach you how to animate a picture i'm going to teach you how to clean up all these menus with a better button press system a little bit about scripting and things like that that's all coming up very soon here um, as i get more time to do it i of course will be focusing on that uh, thanks again guys for joining me on these little tutorials um, i'll be doing some really cool design tutorials here uh, i'll be going over art and how to use different art programs to create pixel art um, or just uh, pixel art is pretty much my, my big thing but there's also you do need to understand some illustration in order to get in pixel art i'll teach you guys scripting how to use javascript um, which 
is what this engine is built off of. Um, I'll teach you how to use basic programming principles. Uh, and then that way you can read the programming inside and then manipulate it however you see fit. Uh, it's, a, it's a big process. It's a lot of learning. Don't get frustrated. Work hard and practice, guys. Thanks again for tuning in, and I will see you guys in the next tutorial.